The 1930s were a time of political turmoil. The stock market crash of 1929 led to the Great Depression. In 1933, the unemployment rate in the United States was 25%, leaving many people starving in the streets. During those desperate times, people turned to more radical political views. Italy, Portugal, Germany, and Spain turned to authoritarian right-wing regimes. Seeing wealth inequality as an important cause of the misery of the working class, communism also gained popularity. Man was truly at a crossroads. That will be the theme that Diego Rivera was asked by John D. Rockefeller Jr. to be painted on the walls of the Rockefeller Center's lobby. Rivera was a Mexican muralist, along with Jose Clemente Orozco and David Alfaro Siqueiros. These artists painted walls because it was the best way to democratize art. They made art that was accessible to everyone, and that art was often social and political. Rivera was a communist, and he'd even go as far as living in 1937 with Leon Trotsky, a famous anti-Stalinist communist. In 1922, he joins and gets highly implicated in the Mexican Communist Party. In 1929, he will marry another notable Mexican communist artist, Frida Kahlo. In 1931, Rivera has an exhibition at the Museum of Modern Arts in New York City, which he will attend with Kahlo. The next year, he paints the Detroit Industry Murals at the Detroit Institute of Arts, where he gives homage to Detroit workers, which he will portray having different skin colors. He puts in a bit of communist imagery and paints the bourgeoisie as observers of the working class. Fascinated by the industrial machines, he makes them a centerpiece of the painting, but doesn't forget to also paint the downside of machinery, which is the growing war industry. In 1933, a lot of those themes come back in the lobby of the Rockefeller Center with, of course, machinery separating the painting in two. On the left side of the man at the crossroads, Rivera pictures the bourgeoisie partying while, next to it, the working class is starving. He paints warplanes and armies. On the right side, you see a group of workers of different ethnicities. At the center of these particular workers, the portrait of a man will cause tremendous controversy. Rivera decides to paint Vladimir Lenin, the Russian communist revolutionary. Of course, the Rockefellers, the richest family in the United States, were at the extreme opposite of communist ideas. They were capitalists, and they didn't like the fact that a portrait of Lenin was on their wall. They asked Rivera to remove Lenin from the painting, which he refused. In 1934, the Rockefellers destroyed the mural. Rivera was furious. He decided to go back to Mexico and recreate the same mural. He renames the mural to Man Controller of the Universe and adds a portrait of Trotsky. He also paints Marx and Engels, the authors of the Communist Manifesto. On the opposite side of Lenin, he also paints Lenin's political opposite, John D. Rockefeller Jr. himself. In this mural, Rivera opposes capitalism and communism. On the capitalist side, there is war, wealth inequality, police repression, while on the communist side, there is solidarity and unity. Aside from political images, there's also science and technology, starting with a portrait of Charles Darwin surrounded by different animals. There are also lenses which allow to see, with microscopes, the infinitely small, but also, with telescopes, the infinitely big. Rivera made a great display of artistic integrity. He painted what he wanted, without submitting himself to the political apprehensions of his patrons. He painted an amazing portrait of the Great Depression, representing its technological advancements and its political struggles.